Okay, let's start. Uh, good morning and thank you for joining this call. I'm Jesper Söderqvist, I'm the CEO of Bull. Uh, I'm currently in Dubai, uh, where Bull is participating in uh, MedLab Middle East, uh, which is a significant exhibition in the field of uh, laboratory medicine, attracting some 30,000 participants. Uh, and today I will be presenting our uh, year-end results and also give you a business and organization update. Back at our headquarter in Stockholm, we have our departing CFO, Jan Benjaminsson, uh, ready to support and uh, help out with any questions that you may ha have after the presentation. Please be aware that this presentation is being recorded, and if you don't want to uh, be on video with your comments or uh, questions, please let us know uh, after the call, and we will de delete those parts. You have the opportunity to um, um, place questions in the team chat during the presentation and then after my presentation we will open up for questions. So thank you again for being here and let's get started. So in Q4 uh, Bull achieved uh, several significant highlights and I'm particularly pleased that we can report a good organic sales growth of 4.3%. And this growth has been driven mainly by our vet sales across Europe and also instrument sales in Asia. And this is related to a larger order of 1,200 instruments to uh, India, where about one third was delivered in the third quarter, in the fourth quarter. Um, we, op uh, we report a strong operating cash flow, uh, and this is thanks to our increased focus on operational efficiency and I'm really pleased to see that those activities are really paying off. Also in December uh, we delivered our first product from our partner's new reagent factor in India and um, you know this really marks the start of our new business model where instead of product sales we will have uh, licensed revenues uh, from from India. This will uh, you know decrease our top line growth, but it will increase our uh, gross margins going forward. And also local production in India will enable our partners to participate in public tenders, which is a requirement from, from the Indian government to, uh, financing these uh, public tenders that you have uh, local production and make in India products. Uh, at MedLab, you know, this week, uh, we are particularly excited um, um, since we showcase several new products, uh, we show our uh, new veterinary instrument, H50V, that we released last summer. Uh, but we also uh, show our new five-part solutions, you know, uh, the Medonic N55 and the Svealab Pro, which is based on new cutting-edge uh, technology platform. So really happy to be here. And uh, myself and a few of my colleagues uh, will... Uh, uh, report a little bit where we are on, on our platform projects and our new products that are coming out. But let's start with the uh, financials. So we report a growth negative 1%. Uh, however, that is actually equivalent to an organic growth of 4.3%. Uh, gross margin you know, decreased slightly uh, with 0.2 uh, percentage points. Um, despite that we have this larger order to India, uh, which is strategically priced, which re reduced our, our uh, gross profit in the period. Uh, this strategically priced order will, however, increase our installed base in India and will uh, secure future, future uh, consumables revenues with higher margin. Our EBIT increased by uh, 0.4 percentage points. However, adjusted for um, uh, one-offs, which is related to um, write-offs of fixed assets. Um, the EBIT that we uh, report uh, would have been 15 uh, million instead of the 7 million that we show um, in, um, in, our, in, in our EBIT margin. We uh, continue to work on our working capital and we can report a strong operating cash flow of 21 uh, of 29 million in the in the period 
Our investments in our new technology platform is was 21 million uh, during the fourth quarter. And this is really showing the commitment we have to bring out these new products, but also uh, move bull to uh, the forefront of innovation in, in the coming years. So if you look at the sales bridge, you know, we, we reported sales of 148 million. Uh, we actually had the best quarter in, in 2023 uh, in the last quarter. However, we had exceptionally strong quarter in, in 2022. So it, it, it's, it's a reasonable you know, sales also in US, despite that it shows some, some negative uh, growth here. And the growth in uh, Asia was mainly driven by this larger instrument order to um, India. And then we continue to see a decline in Eastern Europe due to the war in, in, uh, in Ukraine. And then, you know, as I said in the, initially, the uh, in Europe we had a strong uh, sales of our new veterinary uh, solutions. If we look at you know our profitability, um, you know, despite you know some some of the challenges we have in the market and and also the strategically priced orders, you know, we we uh, had a fairly good prof, uh, gross profit, and you know gross margins rem remain at the same level as as last year, uh, and that is really thanks to the, uh, the improvements we have done in, in production, particularly instrument production. Uh, if you look at opex, uh, it increased in the period, but it, this is mainly uh, due to the uh, one-time cost where we did write off of fixed assets, um, both uh, in, in marketing, but also in R&D related to uh, older assets that uh, we will not use going forward as we re renew our product portfolio. Um, and as I said, you know, uh, reported for this one time cost, our EBIT margin would have been 10% instead of the 7% that we uh, report in the period. So, you know, to get a better view of the, the business, I, I really like this rolling 12 month graph. And as you can see here that uh, we had a good uh, instrument sales in the quarter, uh, and you see that the instruments are rolling 12 months is increasing. We sold slightly more than uh, 1100 instruments. Um, you know, a large portion of that uh, is thanks to this larger order in India, but also the number of veterinary instruments uh, increased in Europe. Uh, and the increase of veterinary sales is both related to this new um, product, the H50V, which is a five-part instrument, but also when we bundle that offer with our uh, legacy instrument, the four-part uh, Exigo H400, um, you know, it has turned out to be a very uh, strong offering, and we have seen growth both for the five-part and the four-part instruments uh, during the later part of, of 2023. You can see that the our uh, radiant revenue is you know uh, leveling out, and I think that is related to both that we see you know some lower testing in on our in installed base of three parts, but also that we now in December uh, started um, our new business model where we start to see instead of getting um, uh, revenue from product sales, get uh, a smaller revenue from 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 the license business model but which comes then instead of with a higher margin. If you look at Asia uh, overall, we actually had increase uh, of uh, consumable sales in Southeast Asia, out if you look outside India. If we look at our OEM business, which has you know, shown a significant, uh, significant growth in the last few years, um, we had our best quarter actually in in uh, in the fourth quarter uh, during for last year, but if you compare it to to um, the fourth quarter 2022, we had the exceptional sales. So in this quarter, the the, the reported sales is actually down 19 uh, percent. But I would say that you know the business continues to, to develop very well, and I'm also very excited to see that you know we have put more and more emphasis on our OAM consumable business and and putting. Uh, you know, both marketing sales and development efforts. And that is really resulted in that we have a number of new projects in our pipeline. 
um, and you know it's been filling up the last year, which will create significant growth opportunities uh, going forward. So I look very positively on 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 our you know um, advancements in in, in consumers and what we can achieve in for that business uh, going forward. So if we zoom out a little bit and look at the market, you know, what is it looking like? So in US, our focus is really on the OEM business until we have FDA approval and released our new instruments in um, in the US market. Um, so uh, the OEM business has developed well, and I'm, I'm, I'm expecting that it will continue to develop well over the coming years. And also have some, you know, uh, significant opportunities, you know, uh, longer term. That can contribute to, to our growth in, in the US. In Asia, we see a in really intense competition, mainly from uh, Chinese manufacturers and uh, several markets, you know, and the biggest market being India, really uh, favor uh, local manufacturing. And we have now taken steps to uh, both uh, produce uh, reagents locally, but also started a, uh, a project to transfer. Uh, production of our uh, older three-part instruments to India so that we can have a stronger position in India when it comes to uh, making India products. In Western Europe, I think you know, you've seen that from, from many um, companies, but it's really a difficult investment uh, climate and you know, the market has been volatile. Uh, what we see is that you know the opportunities in in VET seems to be you know quite solid and uh, you know we look favorable in how our veterinary business will develop going forward. Eastern Europe, you know, it's, it's very tragic, but there's no really no end to Russia's war in, in Ukraine, and I expect to see further declines of our business in in Eastern Europe. In Latin. Um, we uh, haven't seen you know, strong growth lately, and it's really related to that large, large part of this market is uh, doing, you know, volume testing is really done on the five parts instruments. So it, it, this will create you know, good opportunities um, when we come with our uh, up, updated portfolio, but our, our three part sales is, is fairly you know, uh, moderate in uh, LATAM currently. However, we have identified you know, growth opportunities in, in the veterinary market, and, and we are considering to uh, release our new product also for sales in LATAM uh, the coming year. Middle East and Africa, you know, and being here in, in Dubai, I can really see it's a very dynamic region, and we have created uh, an increased footprint. We have several new uh, distributors coming on board. However, there are, you know, difficulties with, with payment restrictions from several uh, markets and, um, and weak currencies, which really limit sales uh, short term at least. So overall, I mean, we are operating in a very volatile market, you know, with, uh, you know, uncertain, you know, economic and geopolitical development. And of course, you know, the, the latest development uh, will, you know, uh, increase costs for, for supply chain and logistics if there is no kind of short term solution to the war in the Middle East. But I would say, you know, despite this market volatility, you know, we, we continue to in, in our best, uh, we continue to invest in, 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 in enhancing our portfolio. And also in the market, there are continued investment in, in healthcare overall. Uh, and you know, and this will continue in the emerging markets as expected, and which will create also sales, uh, increased sales of diagnostics uh, where we that we will benefit from. So uh, as I said, you know, we are in Dubai this week, and we are showcasing um, our new products uh, for the first time to uh, customers. So we have recorded a little video um, yesterday, with, which, which was the first day of the show. So I, I thought I would uh, share this video with you and you can listen to uh, a few of my colleagues here, um, what they experience in Dubai. Hi, I'm Jeanette Dikas and I'm product manager at Bull Diagnostics. I'm here at Medlab Middle East in Dubai, the annual conference. So this year, uh, I'm happy to announce that I've brought with me a 
couple of new members of the bull hematology family. We're uh, introducing the uh, 950 series, and this is Medonic N55. And on the other side, on the other side, we have Swella Pro. So uh, different product lines of the same uh, platform. So uh, opening today. Hello, my name is Adi Yusi. I am sales director for the European Elite in Africa. Together with our team from different boards, we had in Dubai to present our new five part. Of course, the rest of the products what we have. I'm very happy to tell to you that we have a lot of meetings that we book with Minister of Health from Africa, Middle East, because we have a very big interest in our four products. Of course, from new five part and our old three part. I can give more from Basim that we live here in Dubai and take part of uh, Middle East. Hello, oh, good morning. We are here in the Med Lab in Dubai, the most important exhibition for the medical equipment and laboratory equipment in the region. We are proud to meet our family partners from Peru, that they are excited to grow our business in the region. I wish everybody successful show. Thank you. So, hello everyone. My name is George Van Reuter, the area manager from for Africa, for Bull Medical. We are so excited to see you here today and to also invite you for the Arab Health uh, Med Lab. Uh, we are excited to present our five-part analyzer that we have been waiting to launch to the world. Very exciting product. We are really uh, having a lot of people who are interested in that from us and we also uh, be part of our sub distribution network. So please welcome and enjoy the show. So with these new systems, uh, as with all bull hematology analyzers, we are targeting the decentralized testing market. So it's been uh, very uh, expected from uh, uh, from our partners and customers uh, with the robustness that hematology, bull hematology analyzers bring. So as with our three part analyzers, these new systems contain the bull fluidic system, uh, making the analyzers really robust that allows installations in remote areas. But at the same time, we bring uh, measurement quality at par with the central laboratory, so uh, which is so important for doctors and patients to have accurate results as patients for decision making. So it feels really good to uh, to be here in Dubai and that we started to you know the launch of these new products. Um, and as uh, Shanette alluded to, I mean, uh, we, we show that we have a robust and accurate uh, instrument performance and we compare that to uh, central laboratory equipment and we can, you know, show the same accurate results. Um, so this is really, you know, really exciting and, and very, I'm very happy to that we, we got to this point now. We're in the final preparations of uh, our performance evaluation, where we will do uh, clinical trials at, at several sites in, in, in the US. Um, we're in discussions with FDA regarding the, you know, the details of uh, in the clinical studies. And um, yeah, we, we have some you know, things we need to iron out before we can, can um, complete the protocols. So we'll see how, how that ends. Um, what we know is that the requirements from from for the CE mark, according to IVDR, we have a good grip on, and we are continue to be committed to um, submit the regulatory submissions for both CE and FDA before uh, year end. However, it could be that we uh, we will submit for CE a couple of months earlier because we may need to extend the studies in the US to um, have a. FDA approval for our, our solution for the micro pipette adapter, which is a unique feature that we have with our instruments. How are our plans to start sales uh, during the first half of 2025 and um, remains? And uh, yeah, so everything is you know moving ahead and very, very happy that we have reached this point now. Also, I would like to make another announcement, and that is that we have um, Strengthened our ex executive team, um, as we already uh, announced, uh, Jan Bien Amundsen um, is uh, handing over the responsibility uh, as CFO for Bull to Holger. Um, 
uh, tomorrow. Holger uh, comes with a you know solid career in in various finance uh, positions, uh, working at Asa Abloys. He has uh, in, during a, a fairly long period, so he has a lot of you know experience working in a man manufacturing company similar to 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 the bull operation. So I'm very happy to have Holger on board. Uh, we have also hired Simonetta Tomiolo, um, born and raised in Italy. Uh, she has a PhD in, in, in biomedical uh, chemistry and has worked in various uh, marketing roles. And it's really a great addition to the team uh, as we will increase our marketing efforts going forward when we launch our new uh, products. So great additions to, to our team and really happy to welcome them. So in summary, uh, you know, we are operating in a very volatile market and uh, I think, you know, as an organization, we're becoming better and better uh, to um, manage, you know, the, the various challenges that we have seen the last few years and also probably will see uh, going forward. I would like to point out that we are continuing to um, increase our installed base and, and thanks to the business model we have in Bull where we uh, place instruments and then have recurring revenue during the lifetime of the instruments. Um, you know, I think this makes a, you know, a very robust business model that we will continue to leverage going forward. Of course, building a larger installed base will be significantly um, faster once we release our new five part instruments, because this is really where the market is, is, is growing. And I think with this uh, instrument, we will have a very strong position in the decentralized market for human diagnostics. And then with the updates we have done of the veterinary portfolio uh, uh, last year, uh, I expect to see uh, growth uh, coming uh, this coming year. And then of course, you know, the OEM has, has grown uh, very well the past few years, and we will continue to invest to uh, grow this business going forward. So. And then, you know, short term in 2024, we have a lot of activities uh, focusing and opt optimizing our working capital and, and really drive efficiency in the production. And that is how we will improve our profitability short term going forward. So with that, uh, I would, you know, thank you for your attention 